SN5550 here. I'm going to explain today how to reconfigure this NAS to run this station manager. This hardware is very good. The problem is the DCUS software is not very good. It's unreliable. Anybody that's had these probably knows that when you lose a single disk drive, there's a good chance you're going to be out of luck. The data goes corrupt and DCUS support is basically clueless on the issues and they're not willing to fix anything. I've had three failures on different N5550s where a single drive went offline and in all cases the data went corrupt. I could stick the drives in a Windows PC running the Crystal Disk Info, looking at the smart tables to find out the drives were fine, yet DCUS would corrupt the data, which is one bad drive. I researched how to put June's loader on here to load Disk Station Manager. After I did that, I did some testing with pulling drives, and in every case when I pull the drive to simulate a failure, the data was intact. You don't lose anything. So it's good hardware, but it was bad software that DCUS includes with these, with these uh, NAS units. So to get this thing ready for June's loader and this station manager, the first thing you have to do is back up your data. So if you've got a working system, you're going to have to get the data backed up because we're going to format the drives with this station manager. There's no way to retain the data on these drives. The second thing you need to do if it's functional and it's on your network, you will need to get the MAC address, which is also referred to as the physical address, off of this NAS drive. The Junes loader requires the MAC address. If you don't have a working system where it's not on the network, uh, maybe you don't have any drives loaded, you can build a, a bootable USB flash drive with something like the Hiren. Uh, boot recovery and from there you can run uh, an IP config command and get your MAC address or you can go log into your router and look at the table of IP addresses and then find the, uh, the MAC address but that's going to be important and you, it's mandatory to get June's loaders working. To use June's loader you're going to be permanently leaving a USB flash drive installed in the unit. It's not just for the initial load. This must stay in here because we're going to be booting off this every time the uh, unit is turned on. Also for the load you're going to need a monitor just temporarily for configuring this NAS. This NAS will not work with June's loader with the stock BIOS settings. So we're going to make one change to the BIOS in order for June's loader to work correctly. It also has an HDMI port or VGA, but I've only tested the VGA port. Also, it, this uh, NAS has two NICs. I've always configured it to use the first NIC, which is closest to the power supply. I'm not sure if the second NIC is possible, but for the way I'm going to demonstrate this, we're going to just use the first NIC. To get this drive open, it's very simple. It's three thumb screws. And then to pull the case off, just hold this thumb screw back. And I'm going to slide the camera up just a little bit. And then push the case forward and then you can just pull it up and remove the unit. Now if we look internally here, I'm going to zoom in on the piece that we have to remove. We need to remove this. This is the DCUS software which is what it boots off of. So you're going to hold that dimple in and then pull down on the cord to pull it out and then there's a power cable here and just pull that out. Do not throw this out 
you never know. You might need to go back to something, or if it doesn't work, at least you can redo the VCUS software. While you have this open, I highly recommend that you change the battery on the motherboard. These guys are several years old, and I got burned with the, the battery after I made the BIOS change. I did not realize the battery was dead, so when I powered down the unit, moved it, it lost my BIOS changes. So while you have this open, it's a very simple watch battery, and this is the part number for it. It's a CR1220. You can get these on eBay. So I would definitely, to save yourself any headaches, put a replacement battery in here, because otherwise it, it may lose your BIOS settings. Okay, so the next step, once we have the lid off, we have to make a BIOS change. Uh, to turn this on, because the lid is off, the power switch is recessed behind this metal plate here. It's this top green micro button. You just touch that for a second and that will turn this on. Okay, so now with your monitor and keyboard connected to the VCUS, let's power it on. On your keyboard, you want to press the F2 key after you hear the post beep. So press the F2 a few times. In the bottom left, it tells you press F2 for system utilities. Now you want to slide down to boot features using the arrow key. Press Enter. And you want to slide down to UEFI boot. By default, this is enabled. It's disabled on my system because this is a working disk station manager. Press enter on that line item and make it disabled. Then press the F10 key and save your changes and it boots. That's it. Now June's loader has booted, and now Disk Station Manager is actually loading. This screen is all you are going to see for June's loader. It's not going to give you a lot of information, but this is a working screen. Okay, so once you're ready to put the lid back on, I want to warn you to be very careful about this plastic power switch which is right here. This is not actually a switch it's just an extension with a piece of plastic here that reaches into the chassis and pushes a micro switch. Somehow when I was putting this lid back on once I guess if you have this chassis slightly cocked one way or the other this plastic can get pretty caught up on the metal and you can either break it or fatigue it. I ended up fatiguing it right here. There's a little bit of a stretch mark. You can see the plastic. And the switch was no longer flush with the metal. It was acting like a spring. It was pushing back. So every time I put the lid on, it was constantly holding in the power button. If you get into that kind of a scenario, the best thing to do is to take a hair dryer, put a screwdriver blade, on the, the plastic to hold it flush and then heat it up with a hairdryer slightly to relax the plastic so that it stays flush and doesn't act like a, a spring and push itself back in. Once I did that, it worked correctly. Uh, it basically boils down to when you put this lid on, it, it's not easy. It can get snagged on a few different areas and you just have to be patient and you know, just careful when you put it back on. So after Disk Station Manager is loaded, you can go into the control panel and you can see what the, the hardware is here. It's an Intel Core i3. It's running at 1.8 uh, gigahertz. It's two cores and two gig of memory. 
and it's running the 623 release 25426 which is currently the latest version as of uh, May 2020 okay so the final note um, after you have this station manager running on your VCUS uh, keep in mind none of these LEDs are going to work the LCD panel on the, on the bottom all you're going to have is this blinking LED over here which doesn't mean anything and that's because this was a function of VCUS hardware and this station manager is not going to know how to control these various lights that they put on it but it works great it's very reliable with the disk station manager software uh, I've been running it for probably about two years now and no issues